Hi, my name is Jenny Lynn Hall, and I'm going to give you a little introduction to my installation called Immaterial. Um, generally, I work in series of paintings, but this was conceived as a, as a whole gallery-wide installation, um, which is a little bit different for me. I had a lot of support for, from some friends in pushing me forward into taking this creative risk. It, um, it started by, actually I was whitewashing a door in my basement and had it reminded me of a series I had started quite some time ago that was about um, things that are hidden from our view. And my plan was to whitewash over images of this particular church that I knew about in, in Italy, near where I used to live. And, um, and so it was sort of like a snow job kind of thing where your reality is deliberately obscured from you by other people or by other circumstances. And so this started about that, about how we can be misled deliberately. But the project became a lot more interesting when I talked about when I started to think about what we tell ourselves about reality and the stories that we tell ourselves that are built up maybe over time and, and ultimately form our opinions about the world that we live in. There is a basic geometry underlying this work that's, that represents the underlying connectedness of life. In natural forms and in ancient architecture and art, there's a, a, a geometric underpinning and it creates really the laws of beauty. And this is a metaphor for how we're all, t all connected as living organisms. But this is overlaid by um, transparent and opaque layers of paint that prevent us from seeing this universal connectivity. And those layers represent any, any number of things that prevent us from seeing clearly. Um, it also gets into the arbitrary nature of our experience on this earth. We, um, most of our lives are made up of chance meetings. Timing is a huge thing. If you leave your house five minutes later, you encounter totally different things. It, the series of little decisions that we make and things that we encounter actually influence our paths quite a bit. And I think it's important to remember how that ripples out and how why in so many religions it says that it's important just to be kind and compassionate because those affect those, all of those actions, the little actions, interactions that we have with other people ultimately matter because they influence one person and they influence other people and it, and it creates a similar grid to the underlying geometry represented in these paintings. Um, so it was, it was really an evolution of, of my thinking about, about these issues. And the first ones were a little bit more bold geometrically, and they, they ended up being pretty stripped down. But I ask the viewer to, to contemplate this. Um, one of the reasons why I don't want the work to be photographed is because I think it's more interesting to think about why we're inclined to take photos in the first place. Um, so many people now kind of obsessively take photos of what they're eating, every, every experience that takes away from them living in the moment. And if you look at a photo that you take of an experience, not only does it distract you from what you're living, but it also will never clearly represent that experience. Um, it'll be some sort of memory of it, but, but all of the, the senses of clear sight, three, peripheral vision, smell, uh, touch, maybe the wind was blowing, all of these things that formed that experience are not represented in a photograph. And, um, and so with the show, I really wanted that distraction taken away. And also they don't photograph well, they're very subtle. And, um, and I don't think the they would, photos would do this, this work any service. But, but I also am concerned about um, just digital reproduction in general, especially now that so much is on the internet. People feel compelled to put things on the internet, but it's, for artists, it's a way of sharing and getting um, our name out there, but it also makes us vulnerable to pirating and theft. And I wanted to address the, my inner Luddite and ask people to come to the, the gallery instead of 
of judging it on a 10 minute viewing or 10 second viewing. I mean, we see, we're bombarded with images that we're continually seeing and dismissing or seeing and liking. And even that process of liking an image if you're on social media, which I, I don't happen to be, but it becomes a popularity. You know, you wanna see how many likes your particular image gets. And I just wanted this work to be separate from that. So it's my way of addressing um, that peculiarity in these particular times that we live in. So I hope you'll come to the gallery and see this work. Thanks. Hi, my name is Beth Fine. Um, I'm an interdisciplinary artist and I'd like to introduce you to the, my solo show um, that I currently have called The Poetry of Water. I've always had an affinity for water. If we swim in it, it embraces us. We drink it to be nourished. It connects us across great distances. Water carries us from place to place, being a lake, being by a lake, the ocean, a river, a lagoon, lifts our spirits. Water cleanses and sustains us and the planet we inhabit. These are woodblock prints, mono prints. So each print is different. I'm not making um, an addition. Um, each one is an individual print. And I'm playing with the different configurations of these water forms as woodblocks. Um, this is a con continuation of the reclamation prints. Um, they were inspired by a project in the Central Valley of California um, where water was being reclaimed and put back into a stream specifically so the steelhead trout could spawn. And what I've done here is take these landscape images from different locations and I have woven the scientific data that's used in actual reclamation projects into the print in an abstract way and also um, blind embossing onto the white paper <clears throat> around the photo etching. During the pandemic, I started to work on a new series of prints um, that were abstract and based on shape and form and color. And um, these water prints evolved from that work that I did during the pandemic and post pandemic to find a way, a look, I was looking for solace in um, a time that was difficult for all of us. And um, these water prints, um, are using rain and water drops in an abstract way to think about water um, and in, inspire us to talk about it. But they're also meant to soothe and to um, bring you into a contemplative state. They're a combination of uh, woodblock plates and um, uh, relief plates, including blind emboss. This is the very first reclamation print and includes the steelhead trout.
This work is um, hand printed on silk and they were shapes that were cut um, and then relief printed by hand that is without any printing press. Um, and it's a contemplation of water. And all these prints are meant to evoke thoughts and conversations about water and what it means in our lives and what it means to us and how important it is in the context of global warming. This print is a mono print, and it, it, as it are all the abstract prints. Um, this was made with wood blocks, um, printing on an etching press, and um, each piece is inked and passed through the press, and there's many, many layers to give you all these configurations of the waves interacting. I want to thank you for taking the time to look at my work, and I hope you'll come and visit the um, show in person at Gallery Route 1 in Point Reyes. Thank you. Hello. Welcome to our exhibition in the Annex Gallery. It's titled Rust, A Topography of Time by myself, Renee Owen, and Mirka Naster. Both of us are artist members here at Gallery Route 1. Our exhibit is a collaborative textural conversation entwining our interpretations of the current global diaspora with lines of the displaced stretched across the globe. We use the patterns and colors of rust to create a metaphor for the changes and loss woven through the refugees' plight. We asked ourselves this question, what compels men and women, children and the elderly, to flee their homeland, leaving behind entire families and all they have ever known to disperse over dangerous routes to find a new home. This exhibit explores these questions, hinting at answers as they unfold through the tactile exploration of our artwork. Colors, layers, and the haptic act of stitching or shaping are transmuted into a collective narrative unfolding and speaking to our own personal histories and cultural roots. Rust is a metaphor for time and place for lost and change. The phenomenon is the result of iron and oxygen reacting together in the presence of water or moisture in the air. The process can be quick or slow, depending on the atmosphere. At the coast, oxidation ends quickly with the process eating away at the metal and turning silver or gray into reddish browns. I've always had a fascination with rust, collecting rusty objects everywhere I go, and I've begun to realize that I have a fascination with the state of liminality. 
I continue to explore it in both the art and my poetry. And it's that quality of being between two stages on the verge of transitioning to something new, like dusk, my favorite time of day, where it edges from day and slides into night, or a found object of human habitation shifting from a shiny and usable state to rest, which eventually crumbles into small, small particles like earth or dirt. This first piece here is titled Artifacts, and it was found rusty metal rescued from the banks of the Navarro River, paper, local plants, and ink. I used eco printing or botanical printing along with the rust to create the pieces of artwork displayed in the holes of this rusty piece of metal. And it too is an exploration of liminality. Some of the pieces still bear the imprints of plants that look like trees. Combining these two pieces really reflects my love of materials, and that's often my process and where I start, allowing the materials to combine and then speak to me about what content might be revealed, and that unfolds again through my haptic work with the piece itself. Stepping into the back gallery, we have the next piece titled Border Knots, part of my Adrift series. The title of border references the definition, the part or edge of a surface or area that forms its outer edge, and the definition of knot, an intricate or difficult matter, a small lump or swelling. It speaks to the challenges and thorny issues that we face personally and politically as we deal with the millions of people whose habitat have been disrupted and are trekking across land and sea seeking safety and freedom. Started with rusty metal, found rusty metal, which was dipped in paper pulp and then rusted again with a solution of seawater and the little woven balls inside are created with wax linen thread molded around rice forms. This next piece is titled Bread for the Journey, also part of the Adrift series. It's made from abaca pulp, found rusty metal object, Molds made of rice and beans, ink, horsehair, fragments of text embedded in the paper from vintage books in multiple languages, and wax linen thread. Using paper making and paper casting, embedding, mold making. This piece again asks the question, what will we offer the millions of people fleeing their homes? They will need Tents, blankets, water, medicine, warm clothes, and bread for the journey as they search for safe passage. What will we do? Making this piece as I released the molds and the beans poured from inside of the cast paper, it really spoke to me about their hunger and their needs. And I reflected this in the piece. Now I'd like to introduce Mirka Naster and her piece titled, Where Tomorrow? And this is the statement that Mirka's written about it. The organic nature of rust dyed cloth and tea dyed paper sets me on a stitching journey into imaginary landscapes, seascapes, and urban scapes. Meditatively stitching the irregular patches and lines as if I were pouring over a map. I explore the contours and spaces, recording the details with my needle and thread, bays and mountains, islands and shorelines, streets and fields. The unexpected topography brings to mind how those of us who have been or are now immigrants don't necessarily know where we'll be tomorrow. A question always haunts us, 
whether in conscious awareness or subliminally. When might I suddenly be forced to leave the place I've called home for a brief or extended time? Each stitch thus also marks moments of movement, borders, and crossing. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the exhibition today. And I also hope that you will take time to come out and see it in person. It's really a beautiful exhibit, and there are two other exhibits in the gallery that are well worth seeing in person. Thank you so much. Bye now.